In this video, we're both going to multiply and simplify square roots. So now that we understand both multiplication of square roots and simplifying of square roots, we're going to tie them together. So to start here, we're going to multiply the following square roots together. So notice that we have two numbers that are outside of the root and a multiplication symbol in between, which tells us we're going to multiply those two numbers outside the root together. So we have 8 times 2 is 16. We then have two numbers underneath the root. We have 3x and we have 20x to the fifth. And what we're going to do is we are going to multiply them together and place them under one root. So 3 times 20 is 60. Then remember here we're taking x to the first times x to the fifth. And this goes back to our exponent properties. So we have 1x being multiplied and then 5 more for a total of 6x's being multiplied. So here we now have x to the power of 6. So now from here we have one single square root and what we're going to do at this point is now we're going to focus on the square root and how we can simplify it. And in order to do that we need to reference again those perfect squares. So I'm writing those along the side in black and we need to check and see is 60 divisible by any of these values? So here, if I take 60, what I notice right off the bat is 60 is divisible by 4, and it's really 4 times 15. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of 15 times 4. And then I'm going to break up this little x to the 6th here into x squared times x squared times x squared. So now anything that's underneath a square root, I'm going to give its own mini square root too. So here we have 16 times the square root of 15 times the square root of 4, and then a square root of all of those little x's. And what I notice here is that I get the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of x squared is x for all three of these. So really what I have going on here, and I'm going to rewrite it off to the side, is I have 16 times 2x to the third, and then I still have this square root of 15 left underneath the root. Well here I have 16 times 2, which is 32. And now here at this point, I double check my square root. My square root isn't divisible by any of the perfect squares. And as a result, this here is my perfectly simplified square root. So let's just practice a couple more easy ones here. So here we start off with just two numbers that are underneath the square root being multiplied. Remember that these combine by taking 6 times 12 both underneath the root. And then this becomes the square root of 72. So now from here, now that we've multiplied these roots together, we're actually going to work through and simplify them. In order to do so, I need my list of perfect squares so that I can check and make sure that I do not have a number underneath the root that is divisible by any of these perfect squares. So if I start looking at 72, what I notice is that 72 is in fact divisible by a perfect square as it's divisible by 36, and it's really 36 times 2. So here we're going to break up 72 now so we can simplify this. So notice we condensed it using multiplication, and now we're going to simplify it by using a perfect square. So here we have 36 times 2. We rewrite it as a 36 under one root and a 2 under another. I then note that the square root of 36 is in fact just 6, so we have 6 times the square root of 2 as our simplified root. If I then look at my second example, here I notice I have numbers on the outside that need to be multiplied. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And then I have the square root of 5 times the square root of 10. So we get the square root of 5 times 10. So here I have negative 6 times the square root of 50. So now that I've multiplied, now I'm going to work towards simplifying these. And what I notice here is that 50, which is my number under my root, is divisible by 25, as it is 25 times 2. So here, negative 6 times the square root of 2 
times the square root of 25. Then from here I notice that the square root of 25 is in fact 5. So here I really have negative 6 times the square root of 2 times 5. Well these two numbers are both now outside the root and they can be multiplied together. So we end up with negative 30 times the square root of 2. And final two examples now containing variables. So again we're going to need these perfect squares written along the sides so we can use them for simplifying purposes. Hopefully you're getting the hang of calculating those very, very quickly off the top of your head. So then from here I'm going to begin by simplifying the outside of the square root, which I notice we have 4 times 3, which is 12. Then my numbers underneath the square root, I notice I have 8 times 6, which is 48. I then have x to the first times x to the fifth, which is x to the sixth. Now that I've multiplied this together, I need to start looking a little bit more closely at this 48. So I look over and I notice that 48 is divisible by 4, as it's 12 times 4. It's also divisible by 16, as it's 16 times 3. So I'm going to rewrite it as 16. So here I have 12 square root of 16 times 3. And then I rewrite this x to the 6th as x squared, x squared, x squared. So now everything under the root is going to get its own square root. So here we have the square root of 16, the square root of 3, and then we have all those little x squares under their own root. Now from here I'm looking to identify any perfect squares. So I notice here the square root of 16 is really 4 and all of the x squareds will evaluate to be just x. So what I really have here is 12 times, I then have 4x to the 1, 2, 3, all times the square root of 3. 3, I notice, is a fully simplified square root because it's not divisible by a perfect square other than 1. So then finally I need to multiply these numbers outside the root together. So we end up with 48x cubed times the square root of 3. Now if I look at this next example, here I notice I just have one number outside the root, so that stays. My number is inside the root. We have 2 times 8, which is 16. We then have x squared times x to the 4th, which leaves us with x to the 6th. And we have y times y, which leaves us with y squared. Now from here, if I look, I notice that 16 is in fact a perfect square. So that is going to evaluate very, very nicely. So I don't have to break up 16 at all. So then from here, I focus on the variables, and I notice that I need to rewrite my x to the 6th. So here I rewrite my square root, so I have 16 times, I break that up into x squared times x squared times x squared, leave the y squared as is, then I break them up all into their own little square roots. So I have the square root of 16, square root of x squared, x squared, x squared, and y squared. Then from here, I evaluate all of my perfect squares. So I end up with 4x, x, x, and y. And I notice that everything that's under a root has actually evaluated out of the root, which is kind of unique. So then from here I have negative 5 times 4x to the 1, 2, 3, y. Then from here, the last thing I need to do is simplify my numbers outside the root. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. And then I leave on my x to the third times y.